Every town has that crazy conspiracy guy. If you've never met him, you've definitely heard stories of him. Cowering in his basement in a tinfoil hat, insisting that the earth is flat, etc, etc. Even through all his blatant bullshit, one thing that he's always insisted on remains true and always has been. Aliens walk among us. Not in the way you would think, based on the conspiracies though. They don't wear human skin. They don't abduct people in the middle of the night for probing. They don't make crop circles. And they're certainly not lanky and green. They're within us, surrounding us, occupying the same points in space as us. In some cases, we are them. The reason that NASA and other organizations have never found alien life is because they're simply searching the wrong places. They are invisible to us. Completely. They are the pebbles in the soil, on our planet and others. They are the atmospheric gases of other planets. They are Saturn's rings and its many moons. They are the particles created from nuclear fusion in the cores of stars. They are nothing we can imagine, because their laws of existence are not ours. They exist within the folds of the universe, like ticks hiding out in the skin of a dog. They are among us, within us even, and we are blind to it. It was my sophomore year of college. And I was walking to my city's local coffee shop at around midnight because I needed a little caffeine to help me finish my assignments and they were open 24-7. On my way out of the shop, after having made my purchase, I passed a homeless man. He had his hat out in front of him with a sign asking for money. I had paid for my coffee with a $10 bill, so I dropped my change into the man's hat. I remember the amount exactly, $7.87. He nodded at me and acknowledged the small amount of money with gratitude. I began walking, and I got about 20 feet away when the men started yelling, Where's my money? Where'd it go? Somebody stole my money! I turned around to see the men frantically looking around. No one else was inside, and there was nowhere anyone would be able to hide. I walked back over to him. Are you alright, sir? I asked. You're the one that gave me the money. Look, it's gone. He showed me the inside of the hat. It was empty. I was skeptical at first, thinking he may have pocketed it to try to get more. Then I blinked, and the money was suddenly there. What? I sputtered. See? It's gone, he said. I pointed at the hat, exasperated. I had just witnessed the money seemingly materialize out of thin air. None of it was missing. It was the original amount I gave him, $7.87. He looked back down at the hat, and his eyes nearly popped out of his head. What? It was there all along? He continued. I shrugged. Have a good night, I said, beginning my walk back to campus. That night, I didn't even end up needing the coffee to pull an all-nighter. The thought of what happened with the money on the street kept me up all night. I just couldn't figure it out. All I thought about all night was the money, seemingly a blip in the fabric of the universe itself. As the week went on, I kept noticing these blips. They were little things, but still noticeable and incredibly strange. They started off very inconspicuous, but kept getting more and more obvious as the week went on. At first, during a lecture, I was taking notes, and my pencil disappeared. I dropped it, and then couldn't find it. This happens a lot, right? Well, later that night, I found it floating in the jug of orange juice in my fridge. While I was brushing my teeth, half of my toothbrush blipped away, reappearing two seconds later. 
it got to the point where whole chairs would disappear from classrooms, and the people sitting on them never took notice to it. I began studying theories and such that might explain these glitches in reality. Quantum physics, theories about black holes, and even a few witchcraft forums. After hours of searching online, I hypothesized that the cause of these blips was extra-dimensional folds in our reality, pockets within the fabric of our dimension, invisible to the human eye. I set out to research even more, but I kept coming to roadblocks in my findings, until I stumbled upon a website. They called themselves the Interdimensional Anomaly Society, and upon reading the name, I assumed it was Bull. Even so, I decided to look further for a good laugh. The page was full of ramblings about magic and monsters, until I stumbled upon a link that piqued my interest, about dimensional folds and how to undo them. So, I decided to try the website's techniques the next time I saw a blip. It was a few days until I noticed another one. I was walking to my morning physics lecture when I took note of a flyer on a bulletin board clip out of existence. I ran over to it and began to do what the website told me. It seemed stupid, but could it hurt to try? I put my hand out in front of the area where the blip was and concentrated as I made the motion of unzipping a zipper. I then turned my hand as if I was turning a key, and something began to happen. The bulletin board seemed to unfold forward, endlessly in the area that I had unzipped. And right as I was about to peek further in, I heard a voice behind me. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I turned around to face a man of about 40, with graying hair and a fancy tailored suit. I'd seen him on campus before, so I assumed he worked here. What do you mean? I asked. He looked at me. There is a lot you do not understand about those folds, he said. I nodded, confused. Something terrible lies within them. I would advise you to stay away, he said. I zoned out and peeked into the rift I had opened. I heard the men yell, and a burst of energy knocked me to the floor. A sharp pain resonated throughout my left forearm as I propped myself up on my elbows. Listen to me, Emma Blanchard, the man said. I looked up. He knew my name? I have never met him, and he knew my name. He looked me in the eyes as reality itself seemingly began to disintegrate around him. It was terrifying. The space around him, which I thought to be empty, unfolded like an origami project. It revealed secrets, and it uncovered horrors. The empty space around his head filled with about eight more hits, and the empty space around the rest of him blossomed with extra appendages. The corners of the hallway unfolded, revealing horrifying entities that no man could possibly think to dream of. Within doorways, entire cities popped up. Plans grew to enormous sizes. The ceiling opened up revealing the atmosphere within which were many moons and even sky-high cities. It was beautifully terrifying, but it gave me a bad feeling. There were eyes watching from every angle, and sinister things hiding in every corner that were invisible before. Within these few minutes, I viewed the world as one would on a psychedelic trip. Nothing made sense. Everything was weird. And the worst part was that it all instilled a heavy sense of dread within me. Humanoid shadow entities with slightly too many teeth and slightly too long limbs. Eldritch monstrosities with no features discernible to the knowledge of men. Open your eyes. Wake up. Your point of view of reality is but a fraction of the truth. The man's multiple head said. My eyes widened with fear and I could feel my entire body trembling. Suddenly, everything collapsed back in on itself. 
and my vision faded to black. She's waking up. Emma? Can you hear me? My eyes fluttered open, and I woke up to the face of my roommate, Rachel Smith. Wah! I sat up and looked around. I was in the hospital. What happened? I asked. I was walking to class late, and I found you passed out in the middle of the hallway. You didn't look too good, so I called 911, Rachel said. You most likely collapsed from exhaustion and sprained your wrist on the way down, said the doctor in the room. That explained the throbbing sensation in my forearm. No, that doesn't make sense, I said, shaking my head. What do you mean? Your roommate here says you haven't slept in days, so it's quite plausible. The doctor continued. I looked around the room, and finally landed my eyes on Rachel. You didn't see it? See what? She asked, visibly confused. The... the thing... the guy... the... I couldn't find the words. Rachel looked concerned. The doctor looked confused. I inhaled sharply. Never mind. It had to have been a dream. I said. Oh. Okay. A few hours later, I was discharged, and I found myself in my dorm alone, as Rachel had been out. I was trying to get some sleep. As both Rachel and the doctor suggested, I get some rest. But I just couldn't shake the feeling of dread. The feeling that something was watching me. I figured I might as well study or something. To make my insomnia at least a little productive. I cracked open one of my textbooks and began. Doing my assignments was currently like trying to perform open heart surgery whilst being gnawed on by a horde of rats. I couldn't concentrate to save my life. My mind kept bouncing from thought to thought. The assignment. The clock ticking. The homeless men. The assignment. The seven dollar and eighty-seven cents. The pain in my wrist. The wall. The floor. The extra dimensional folds. The assignment. And it kept going like that in an endless circuit. Oh, until I sat back and heaved out a frustrated sigh. My eyes darted around the room as I sucked in a deep breath, before finally landing on my injury. I glanced at my forearm, throbbing within its brace, and remembered the words the man spoke when I tried to open that pocket. Your point of view of reality is but a fraction of the truth. The words resonated through my skull, echoing endlessly throughout. I drummed my fingers on my desk and bounced my leg rapidly as I watched closely for blips within my room. I knew I shouldn't try to open another fold, but the curiosity was killing me. Then, I saw it. The page I was studying on clipped out of existence. I nearly jumped from my seat, moving in closer to the desk as I thrust out my non-injured hand and attempted to unfold reality itself. As the fold undid itself, the textbook seemed to grow pages. Pages written in glyphs and runes that I didn't recognize. I unfolded further and discovered miniature worlds. Realities folded within hours. I winced as I quickly clapped my hands together to close the rift, like the website had told me to. And reality folded itself back up. My textbook was a normal textbook. My eyes felt like they were going to pop out of my head as I pushed my chair out into the center of my room in disbelief at what I had just seen. I pinched myself. I bit my tongue. I listed off all the things in my room. I did everything I could to assure myself that this was indeed real life. I didn't wake up. I didn't snap out of anything. This was crazy. This was unbelievable. I glanced at my clock, which read 10.33pm. 
it was pitch dark outside. Becoming aware of my own thirst, I decided to get up and grab a glass of water. As I walked to the kitchenette, I caught a glimpse of my reflection. I looked like I hadn't slept in a week, which was probably a pretty close estimate. My close cropped curly hair was tussled in a mess, and I had the very obvious look of exhaustion in my eyes. I looked like hell. I needed to get some sleep. I poured myself a glass of water, and as I was about to take a sip, I heard something behind me. What did I tell you? I nearly jumped out of my skin as I whipped around to face the owner of the voice, who turned out to be the man from before. How, how did you get in my apartment? I asked him, confusedly. I didn't ask who he was, because I had a feeling I already knew. Like I said before, there is so much you do not understand and never will be able to. Stop trying to undo the faults. They protect us, he said. Uh-huh. And what does that mean? I asked, lifting the glass to my mouth to take a sip. Don't drink that, he said. What? I sputtered. He made a few hand movements and the space within my glass unfolded, revealing a creature of some sort. I looked at the glass in disbelief. That, the man said getting up from his chair and walking around, is an entity that feasts on the bonds within water molecules. I froze in my tracks, looking at the thing. The man had called it what sounded to me like a series of gurgling noises. It was like a slug in shape, but had no features that I could identify, except for a few tentacle-like structures and large curved teeth. Quite a harmless creature, really. It's the other species you have to worry about, he said as he folded my glass back to normal. I gently placed the glass on the counter not really wanting to drink from it now. The folds and pockets within our reality conceal us from them, the same way they conceal them from us. Undoing the folds allows them to know your location, he said. I folded my arms. Who is them? I asked. The man's expression turned dark. I cannot say, he said. I looked at him. Don't try to mess with anything that you're not supposed to. Please, he said, before clipping out of reality himself. I stood in the kitchenette, dumbfounded. Who were they? What were they? And why did any mention of them make the man so uncomfortable? I could do the smart thing and stay away. Or, I could do the stupid thing and try to learn more. Let's just say, I chose the stupid thing. I decided to unfold my whole kitchen. And, I saw them. At first, it was beautiful. Like a bizarre, surrealist painting. And then, I saw them. They were humanoid. But nearly everything was off. Their heads were too tall. Their limbs were too long. They were almost completely lacking color. I don't know how to explain it. Not white. Not clear. Just no color at all. They had too many eyes. Too many teeth. And worst of all, I had a terrible feeling that there was more to them that I just wasn't seeing. I stared into the fold in a state of catatonia until it was snapped back to reality when one of them turned and looked at me. Its glistening, colorless skin pulling tight at all of its joints as it did so. An even heavier feeling of dread set into me 
as it's God knows what seemingly poured into my soul. My heart nearly jumped out of my chest, and I quickly closed the rift. I should have listened. I stood in the same spot in the kitchen for a few more seconds. The entity made me feel dreadful. I was shaking uncontrollably and struggling to catch my breath. I found myself doubled over, grasping the countertop with my hands, desperately trying to breathe. My heart was beating at light speed. And I didn't know what would happen next. I took shaky deep breaths and tried to steady myself. It saw me. It knew where I was. I should have listened. I didn't know what to do, so I ran to the police station. They're coming! I sputtered to the chief of police, who looked at me like I was insane. Who? I explained from the beginning. Are you high? He asked. God, I wish. But no. I said, taken aback by his reaction. Then, you must be crazy. No, I'm not. I promise. Then show me one of these extra-dimensional folds, why don't you? I did the hand motions and unfolded his desk. See? I don't see anything but a crazy person. He said, glancing at my sweatshirt. Say, is that the school you go to? How could he not see? It was right there. Yes, this is the school I go to. Why does that matter? Even better, he chuckled. Crazy science nerd thinks aliens are coming. How about that? He laughed. I got fed up with him and knew that there was no way the police would believe me. Maybe Rachel would believe me? Nope. She thought I was just sleep deprived. Or maybe had a concussion. Someone has to believe me. I know what I saw. In fact, they're not coming. They've always been here. Among us. There. Already here.